All right, so guys, there is gold in your backyard. So tonight we're just gonna be talking about some where to find inventory to sell. Some of you are in like the, our legends group, for example. Some of this may be super basic for you. Um, it'll, I guarantee you'll come away with some gold nuggets from it um, because we're gonna talk about some actual places where some of our folks and past students, former, current students, past students, all the, all the above have sourced that to give you ideas. Cause a lot of folks say, I just don't know where to find inventory. And sometimes we'll say, well, inventory is literally everywhere. And it is, but that doesn't really help you all out if we say it's <laughs> everywhere. I mean, cause then it doesn't give you any place to start any place to like, you know, start just, uh, thinking about where to begin because that is that can be overwhelming it is true um the inventory is all over the place and you can probably walk into any store and find something but we want to give you some very practical tips so that if you are just starting out it'll give you an idea of like oh wow i never thought of that idea or that product or that store for example so we're gonna do some training on um different types of stores different types of inventory because you guys are sitting on gold mines right now probably i guarantee there's all uh, you probably have things sitting around your home right now that could be sold, um, especially if you're getting started. That's a great way to start because then you can get some build up some cash uh, to invest in other products. So let's um, we're going to go real quick. Some of you, I think a lot of you already know us. I recognize a lot of these names on on here. And so I'm going to go through this very quickly, but I get new people that come into our audience all the time. So for those of you that are brand new, we're going to introduce ourselves and then we'll get into the content. Of course, I'm Ryan Rieger. This is my friend, colleague friends since middle school honey woods <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this is her family um, she helps me run the the legends group that we have and it's an amazing group we'll talk about it at the end but let's real quickly tell you our stories uh and then get an idea of where we came from so i in 2008 i lost my job i was living in indiana uh, and moved here and the only thing i knew that was going to happen was i was moving to texas and uh, i was out of a job i had no idea what was going to happen how i was going to provide for my wife and i so I've always been entrepreneurial. So that's when I saw the opportunity to jump into my mother-in-law and wife's furniture business that they have uh, or that they had at the time. And it was, uh, they were doing very, very part-time on Craigslist, just posting ads here and there. When I got to Texas, I told my wife, who was in my fiance, um, I, I'd love to make this a full-time thing and, and uh, become an entrepreneur. She says, no, you need to go get a job. But she was gracious and allowed me to kind of split my, or was in, was agreeable to splitting my time between posting ads on Craigslist to sell furniture and also going to look for a job. You know, don't tell her, but I spent way more time on the Craigslist stuff because that was just more exciting <laughs> to me. I did not want to go back to a job because I saw this as an opportunity. Um, and it wasn't like we had lots of expenses. So it wasn't, I wasn't in a, under a ton of pressure. Um, a little bit because I didn't know exactly where we were living with my mother-in-law. So I guess that's pressure because no one wants to have to live with your mother-in-law. Um, so I mean, she was gracious to allow us to live there, but uh, I knew that wasn't the long-term thing. And so we were looking for apartments and I need money. So um, this is actually real, just a fun thing because the, the Google street car uh, car came by when I was outside of our old house uh, with our trailer, with our, you know, all the furniture in the, in there. So that's fun to share with people. It caught me right. It was out. I was outside. Um, in 2012, some of you heard this. Um, if you're on my email list, we, so we start, we, the Craigslist thing did really well for a while. Um, in 2012, though, in April, we woke up one day and saw that a lot of our ads were deleted as soon as we were trying to post them. So that's pretty scary when you're, all of your eggs are in one basket and your income is cut um, severely didn't know exactly what we were going to do, how we we're going to pivot or solve that problem. But God had a plan. And in that same summer, we met Jim Cockrum, who's both a friend of Honey and I, a mentor of ours. And he had an auction for that book. Uh, long story short, we won that auction, got to spend, go to, we flew to, to Indiana and had lunch with him. He spent two hours with us, told us about Amazon and the opportunities with Amazon. Of course, I knew about Amazon, was selling a tiny bit on Amazon with furniture, but was not so much aware of the FBA program that they had, the Fulfillment by Amazon program, which opened up so many doors to smaller items that we had access to that we could sell now. Um, but then as I kept going along, I learned new things. I wrote a book called Real Wholesale Sources. Jim promoted that. Uh, guys, it's all about relationships. I would, if I had not met him in 2012, I don't know where I'd be now. I mean, I'm sure there'd be a way for me to have built that relationship at some point, 
but that just kicked off an amazing friendship and we've done so many cool things together. Um, yes, that is Hallstock, Carl. Uh, that was back in the May of 2019. Uh, we had a conference in England uh, and that we hosted and then uh, took some time to tour Europe and we were going to do it in 2020, but you know what happened. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, Hallstock, that's not a, that's not a, just a picture in the background that is us, us and Hallstock. And that was so much fun. It was probably one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Um, but started writing books and just saw how awesome it is to, um, besides building my own business to be able to help other people build theirs. And now I'm just, I was telling somebody today, I'm addicted to the success stories and we'll share some of them later. And honey right here is one of them. And I'm addicted to helping people find opportunities online to make money and selling physical products online. In my opinion, is one of the easiest, lowest hanging fruit opportunities there is. Because if you have zero dollars, literally zero dollars, zero experience, you can learn how to sell online and start making money. And we've had people start exactly at that position and now have quit their jobs and are able to do this full time. So that's what's fun for me. I have a podcast called Streams of Income or with a book called Streams of Income and we have the Legends Group. So uh, and because of all of that, guys, I get to be home with my family. I have a, a four year old and he's a blast. He may even just pop in here anytime and I, I don't have a lock on my door, so that may happen and we'll just roll with it. But being able to be at home with my family is the goal, the time freedom. And honestly, I want more of that for everybody that's listening. So if that's your goal or whatever. It doesn't have to, maybe that's not your goal. Maybe your goal is to be able to travel to Europe or, or, you know, pay off debt or whatever it is. I'm sure money is going to play a part in that. You need money for the time freedom, money to do the things that you need to do. It's an awesome tool to give you, give you what you need. And so um, some of you have goals to be huge givers to your church and charities that you care about. And this opportunity allows that. So uh, keep listening. We'll tell you more about it, but I'll let Honey share her story. This is me and my family. This picture is <laughs> a little old because those little babies are now in first grade. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but this is, um, to me, this is just a picture of freedom. This is what Mm -hmm. Um, we, we wanted, and we needed from starting this business. Um, you know, like Ryan says, relationships are key. And, um, he's the one that introduced us to all of this years ago when we were trying to find something for my husband to get him out of his job. He was working 12 hour shifts. He was working at a prison. And a lot of those were 12 hour night shifts, as you can imagine, highly stressful. And so this was just a way kind of one of those, well, it's working for Ryan. Let's see if it works, you know, and we knew him and okay. He's, if Ryan he's can do it, anybody yeah. can. Well, not that, but we knew you were legit. You know, you weren't some spammy, <laughs> scammy guy. We knew you. So right, right. like, okay, let's try it, you know? Um, and so, yeah, this is what it provides, you know, time with family. Um, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so we actually started for those of you that are starting with a very small budget. As you can see, I have a large family. I have six beautiful children and um, I actually stay at home. I homeschool them. And so we were on a small tight budget. Um, so we started sourcing and finding products to sell that were like party store items, dollar store items, just really small, little cheap stuff. Um, I think a lot of people start and really most businesses when you start a business, cause that's what this is, um, you feel like you have to start with tons of money. I've got to have all, you know, $10,000 to, to start this or whatever it is. And there's so many people that we know that have started with very small budgets or like Ryan said, we can even show you, um, some ways that people started with nothing. And it's absolutely possible through the stuff that we're going to talk about here. But for us, it was a whole lot of dollar stores and party stores and just starting with what we had. Um, cause we were going to try to make it work with the little bit that we had extra. So Mm -hmm. this is me taking all of them to the store <laughs> because um we'll talk about i think a, a few different ways but for here you know getting in a store buying stuff and reselling it somewhere else where people are looking for it this is that's a picture of those babies were so little um <laughs> but that's that's stuff i do it's something you can do with your family right. um maybe you don't choose to but but that's a huge part of why we wanted to do this it's something we could do together my kids can be a part of it um, and you know, things have adjusted over time. So I don't do everything in this store now, but they still love it when we do. And they love being a part of that. And this picture on the right here is really special to me because this was the day that we, 
um, had decided to go ahead and outsource all of the stuff that we did. So I would drop off everything and I didn't have to touch the product anymore. So it gave us even more time. A really cool thing about this business is that there are a lot of things that you can, once you know what you're doing, you can hire someone else to help do pieces and parts of that business for you. So it's not just, wow, if I want to make more money, I have to work 60, 70, 80 hours a week. It's, I need to find someone else to step in and help with something. So I don't have to work more. I have to work smarter. Um, and as you get into the business and as you grow it, then that's something, you know, that's an option. And that was huge. I took my kids. We, our family went to the zoo that day and it was awesome. You know, business was happening, work was happening and we were at the zoo. So it is possible to have that freedom. Now you got multiple streams of income. Yes, I got, yeah, I'm not making tons of that, but you know, we do, <laughs> we have property. You get to spend time with my kids while the business is working for us. We do. We, I have now, <laughs> I have almost 50 chickens now. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. We have oh. land, we have acreage. Um, we got a whole bunch recently, so they won't be all laying now, but you know, I'll, we'll provide some eggs and food for our neighbors and family and stuff too so it's fun yeah <laughs> Jeez, 50 chickens Golly. <laughs> all right so guys there is we're gonna talk about inventory where do you find inventory because that's the biggest that's one of the biggest questions we always get when we talk to new folks and I, I guarantee there's gold in your backyard. And when I mean backyard, I don't literally mean like you should go digging in your backyard. Although there are people that I, that, um, honey, I don't know if you've heard this before, probably from the private label group that Jenny and I had, where there was a lady that was a create, like she was selling, um, things that she was growing, like, um, uh, or things that fell from the tree, like acorns, pine cones. Yes. We've sold pine cones before at stores. Yeah. Like I remember a couple of years ago, here's one of your first tips. Um, I don't know if it's any good. I can't promise that it's still a good to find or anything, but at Christmas time, there would always be pine cones at yeah. various stores. And I remember walking into Joanne Fabrics on Black Friday and seeing these bags of pine cones yep. and they were selling on Amazon. And they're on eBay. Know, are they on eBay? They okay. are on eBay. Um, so, sometimes paper towel rolls, things like that for teachers oh, yeah. or different kind of container things. Um, you know, yeah, I, don't know what, I don't know what I don't know what they're rolls. going for, but there's a lot of different things that you um eBay is actually a really good place for a lot of that, but you can get bags of pine cones for, off of eBay. Oh my gosh. And yeah. you can, so I guess if they're selling, that means that people are probably grabbing them off of their trees and they're yep. out of the yard. So there are literally, it probably is things in your backyard. That's not the point <laughs> of this webinar or where we're headed, but that may already get some of you thinking, Hmm, my goodness, there are things that I grow that it doesn't grow anywhere else in the country that, uh, that, so that that's a kind of be kind of a theme tonight of things that might be unique to you, unique to your region. That'll give you an idea of so you may even want to take out a piece of paper as you have ideas, jot them down. We're going to give you some like seeds uh, to, of you know places that you can jump off from and start thinking through. Uh, but this is one. Literally, there are people that are sell things that that they grow that fall off trees around them because those things may not be everywhere in the world. So we're going to talk about the inventory pyramid. This is something that um, I came up with that has been used a lot over the last few years. But I in my book Beyond Arbitrage. We were, I, it was a book about wholesale, but I was thinking through some of the stages that an Amazon business or e-commerce business goes through. Now you don't have to go through all of these and definitely not everyone does all these or even starts here, but the, the bottom one is selling items from around your home. That's just one of the easiest places to find inventory. So I guarantee there's things sitting in your house right now that you, you could sell that exact item or that it will give you ideas for other things to sell or sell it or that brand. We tell a lot of people in our legends group to go look at your pantry. What are some of the brand names in your pantry? Start looking those brand names up on Amazon to see if it's selling. Because for example, if you have, you see a can of tomato sauce uh, in your pantry, maybe look up that brand. And there's a, there's a company called red gold that's out of Indiana. That's just an example. If you see red gold tomato sauce in your pantry, look up on Amazon and maybe you see it for like $10. Like, whoa, I know it doesn't cost $10. So if something that you, you know the price of uh, that you've bought before will give you an idea. If you see a two pack for, you know, 12 and you know it costs, you know, $2 a can and then immediately you know that that potentially could be profitable. Now, uh, there's a whole, all different things you need to do to validate whether that's 
the case or not. And if you haven't had any of our Keepa training, just let me know. I'll send it to you. Honey and I did a webinar in August that we talked about Keepa and how to actually validate the products. Tonight, we're going to be talking about where to find products. So some ideas, selling items from around your home, consignment, thrift stores, garage sales, and then we're going to go up to retail arbitrage. And that's all we're going to cover tonight because that's where most people, retail arbitrage and online arbitrage is where most of our students stop. Now we have a lot of people to do wholesale too, but that's not going to be something we cover tonight. Anything on this? No, these are the easiest ways to start, the easiest places Absolutely. to start. So, yep. So these next few slides are going to look the same just because there's <laughs> so many different, I could probably have hundreds of items in here just to get your brain thinking about things. And you look at these like, whoa, old TVs and VCRs. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so do you have any of these things in your home? Do you have books? I'm sure all of us have books. We have a lot of students that start with books. Number one, because it's they're easy to find. And if you have to buy them, they're usually very cheap. So even if you have to spend money on them, you can get them at library sales for a quarter. You can go to thrift stores and find books. If you go, to, if you look for books, look for things that are nonfiction. You're not looking at the Tom Clancy novels that are mass market published. We're looking for things that are rare. I'll show you a couple examples later of actual books that one of our friends have sold. And they're weird, might be weird things that you pick it up and like, whoa, who would ever read this? That's the type of book that you're looking at that you would want us to, to look up and see if is it selling on eBay? Is it selling on Amazon? Old appliances, even new appliances could, could be fine. Uh, do you have board games sitting around your house? New and used board games sell. All toys. Now, Amazon's a little bit tricky right now with toys, but eBay is a good option for those. Facebook Marketplace. Um, clothes. I mean, we've We've bought a good amount when we were first uh, wait, expecting Callum. We bought a lot of baby clothes off Facebook Marketplace that Melaine found brand new, like almost brand new stuff that, because you know, kids run out of stuff or yeah. go grow out of stuff quickly. Mm -hmm. So they may wear it once or maybe they didn't wear it at all. And so it, it, if you have baby clothes sitting around, child, any kind of clothes sitting around, those are things that you can sell and earn some quick money. Yes, VCRs and TVs still sell. Um, even if they're, you know, something old, a lot of people still have old VHS tapes and are looking for ways to play those. And you can't go to Best Buy and find a VCR anymore. So where are you going to go? You're going to go online and find those. So if you have any of these things sitting around your home, um, they are potential money makers. And honey, anything on, on this or any other ideas? No, there's, there really is countless, um, countless things. You know, I think, think about the stuff that you, that you buy online, that you purchase online. Mm -hmm. I know, probably the majority, if not all of us buy stuff online these days. Um, so think about the things you look for, you know, it doesn't have to always be the brand new, you know, hot toy item or anything like that. It's all kinds of stuff. Oh, I need some, this snack thing, um, something for a recipe that I haven't, you know, that I can't find anywhere else or, um, man, I really miss this old game I used to play years ago and I can't right. find, I can't find that one or I'm missing pieces. I mean, there's so many different things. The opportunities are endless. Yeah. We're trying to give you something like Ryan said to just get your mind moving and thinking through things because, um, this is just a little more practical than saying they're everywhere. Right. You can at least see some right. pictures of here's why we say they're everywhere. So, yep. for sure. And then this is the same, same exact type of items, but do you have friends, family, neighbors that have this type of stuff? Because once you sell out of the things that you have and you've earned a little cash, well, now you can go to friends and family and say, you know what? I know how to sell online. Do you have anything that you don't want anymore that you'd like to turn into cash? Some people don't want to take the time to do it or don't even know how to do it. And so if you can just spend a little bit of time creating a listing for something on eBay or Facebook marketplace, you can make some money. My wife, sells stuff on Facebook marketplace for a neighbor friend of ours that just doesn't want to mess with it, doesn't know how to do it, doesn't want to learn how to do it. And she's a friend of ours. So Melaine does it for no, for no fee, but you could easily um, go to somebody and grab that type of stuff and do some type of profit split. So it's free inventory to you. It doesn't cost you a single thing. And so let's say you buy, you grab a TV from a friend that wants it out of their house and you sell it for 50 bucks. You could, you could say, you know, 25, 25, uh, you, you, and 50, 50 is a normal split. It can be anything you want it to be, but when it ever works out between you and your friend, your neighbor, but just literally anything that you have, well, other people have the same type of stuff that can be sold and you can make money on. Same stuff at thrift stores, garage sales, <laughs> and estate sales. Now there are some unique things that you might find in an estate sale that you may not have. Um, 
at your house potentially if it's you know somebody that uh, is older maybe they have a uh, you know really old uh, records or you know who knows but these be on the lookout for these same types of things if you go to thrift stores garage sales estate sales and once you start doing this you're gonna like if you sell you know bunches of board games and you find you go to your neighbor's house and they have board games and you sell those really well and now you know what you're going to be looking for when you go to garage sales you're going to be looking for board games because you know they sell and you know that you can get x amount of dollars for a monopoly that one of your first edition monopoly so it's not you just as you go you learn stuff and you'll you'll start to learn pricing and it just becomes easier and easier and easier as you go And these are some sites you can sell. Now we're talking about used stuff here. You can sell um, new and used on any of this, but uh, a lot of the stuff like we were mentioning, like if it's used clothing, you're not gonna put that on Amazon, but you can put used clothing on Poshmark, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, you can sell about anything. Uh, eBay, you can sell about anything. Amazon, it's gonna be more the more the new stuff, but you can sell used books. You can sell used board games. There are certain things you can still sell that's used on Amazon, but. You may not even ever heard of Macari and Poshmark. Poshmark's very big for clothing. I don't sell on there at all, but I know people that do and do very, very well with it. Honey, anything about this slide or? Yeah, I buy stuff off there. I think, you? you know, um, cool. I think this is a good picture of showing, um, again, all of the different opportunities because a lot of times you just hear about Amazon. And Amazon is an amazing platform to sell on. Um, and the fulfillment by Amazon process where they fulfill orders for you is huge. For me, that was a huge game changer. But all of these other platforms are places that if you're starting with, um, you know, nothing, you're finding things around your house or you're finding things at thrift stores or that, you know, your, your neighbor gives you a bunch of books. Some of these other places might be a better fit for you while you're building up your money. Um, if you are dealing with restrictions, a lot of people think, oh, I can't sell this on Amazon. I'm not allowed to sell, you know, this toy or this brand or whatever it is. And a lot of these other sites have little to no restrictions. Um, and so those can be easier places that you can still sell things on. So there are a lot of different options and opportunities not to overwhelm with so many choices, but to give you an idea of that it doesn't only have to be one. This isn't just one way that everybody has to do the exact same thing. Some people do right. more eBay. Some people do more Amazon. Some people mm -hmm. just love the whole Poshmark Mercari thing. Um, uh -huh. I like to shop on them, but that's not my thing, you know, right. but they're great platforms for people that love that. So um, they're really just a, a lot of opportunity here. And if they, you come against, oh, I can't do this, or I don't like this, then there are things about the different platforms that you can um, pivot and go that direction if that's a better fit for you. Absolutely. Let's talk about Facebook Marketplace for just a second. I've I've sold a few things on there. I'm not an expert, but I was on there today just looking through. Now they and they they may have had this for a while, but they have categories now, where you can see like uh, classifieds, electronics, entertainment, family, free stuff, garden, and outdoor. So this is just a the um, the baby and kid section. It pulls up locally. I think you can do a search and see beyond your zip code, but this would just be an idea to see like what is selling on these platforms, like Legos. Some people make whole businesses of, of taking of old Legos, putting, creating the actual thing, putting it together the way it's supposed to be and selling that piece. Some people sell parts. There's a whole store locally. It's a Lego store that sells. It's not associated with Lego, but it's a, a minifigure store and they sell pieces and parts and put together sets. Um, but go through Facebook marketplace sometime if you're interested in this and just look at what people are selling and like, oh my gosh, I got one of those or I used to have one of those or I've, you know, I know I can get those at garage sales. If you see other, if you see what's selling, it'll give you idea, ideas for things that you can actually purchase for sale and for profit. And some of this could be now cribs might be a little bit harder, but there's things that could be porch pickup. You never even have to see the customer. If you don't want to just say, put the money under my doormat and I'll, I'll leave the product out there. So there's so many, much opportunity. It's crazy. So just to have a look, if your Facebook marketplace is an opportunity or something you're interested in, just look and see what's already selling there. And, uh, you know, maybe this is just a way for you to earn some quick cash by selling something you have that you're not using anymore or selling a neighbor's stuff or friend stuff. And it gets you some quick cash to invest in products, new products to sell on a site like Amazon, or maybe you make a whole business out of this. 
which you totally could. This is mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, if I was doing furniture again, I would probably focus on Facebook Marketplace instead of Craigslist because now you can even take payment on Facebook Marketplace. You can ship from it. Like people can, like, I, I've never done this before. I don't know if you have honey or not, but like I could go and look for cribs in Indiana and somebody could ship it to me. It's. Yeah. I haven't done anything big like that, but it's shipping is a, is a very common thing on Facebook yeah. marketplace. Um, I was going to say too, really a lot of this is just getting the product to where the customers are. Um, my yeah. husband at one point, um, he did this a few times. He would go to garage sales and find furniture that kind of looked just, you know, old, beat up, dusty, whatever furniture, nice quality furniture that just kind of needed cleaned up a little. And he brought it home, wiped it all up, cleaned it all up, washed it off. Didn't really do much other than that. And mm -hmm. we put it on Facebook marketplace and could sell it for more than he, what he bought it for the same yes. day because yes. it's getting it to where the people wanted it. And it, he just, you know, made it look a little nicer, had a nice picture, put it somewhere other than a tiny little, you know, end of the street garage sale and mm -hmm. more people could see it. Um, so there's things like that, that you can do even. Absolutely. Um, that means reminds me of, um, so the Facebook marketplace, you can find stuff for free and make it nicer and flip it. Do you remember from Liberty? You remember uh, the Cox sisters? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, Jeannie, actually, I don't know if she still does it anymore, um, but the guy's a friend of ours who went to school with us. I used to fix up really nice, like things that she would find at garage sales or abandon on the side of the road to be picked yeah. up by the trash. <laughs> yeah. And she would turn it into money like this. So she may yeah. take a cabinet looks all beat up and just add a coat of paint or, yeah. I mean, this is not something I would have any business doing because it would look worse after <laughs> I did it. But some of you have skills and can just yeah. put a coat of paint to it, just make it look nice and turn something that's free on Facebook marketplace like this right here. I mean, that's old and kind of ugly, but there's got to be somebody who's creative that could do something cool with that or this or this crib or the piano. I mean, I've seen all kinds of cool things that people do with pianos. Yeah. Uh, and turn them into uh, other types of things or plant holders or whatever. I don't know. You guys are creative, more creative than me, I'm sure. But all to say is you can, you can get free stuff. Even there are, I know people that buy, get free things and turn around and do something really cool with it and slap a coat of paint on it. And now they got money. So there is opportunity. All right. Here's an example. Of, we have a friend in Northern Indiana that uh, I, I, he's, he has a site and I'll just give him a shout out. It's Jeff Clark of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. I think it's a totally free group. You can get in. He's got a book. I'll, I'll plug it. Sorcerer's Apprentice. He's awesome. And he's a, a genius for finding things that you can get um, for cheap at garage sales, thrift stores, estate sales, and turning around and selling them on. He does a lot on eBay and Amazon, but here's a Pyrex. My, I guarantee my mom still has one of these. <laughs> Yeah. And he sold it for $36.97. He bought it at a garage sale for a dollar. Here's some other things to be looking at. I mean, obviously, you would put anybody that's on here, and if you saw this, you'd be like, oh my gosh, Star Wars 1977 board game. There are some things that may not be so, you may not think about this. That may not be as intuitive. Pretty much everybody's going to look at that and be like, eight bucks. I probably should at least check that out on eBay. The way to do that is go to, um, Go to eBay and go, if you have, like, if you're at a garage sale, go to the, just search for Star Wars uh, Escape from Death Star game. Make sure that you're looking at the one that's, it's, that you're able to compare apples to apples, that the one that they, that you see on the garage sales, the ones you're looking up. So, I mean, you may have to say 1977. I don't know. Just make sure you're looking at the same thing and then do filter by sold listings. Because I could go onto eBay and say this is worth five thousand dollars, and somebody might, oh my gosh, five thousand dollars. Let's you know, let's spend two hundred on it at the garage sale. No, you want to look for sold listings, items that actually sold. It'll tell you the price, and then you can make a decision. So if you see on eBay, it's they're selling for fifty dollars regularly. You know, you can spend eight bucks on it. And look at this. He said he bought it at a garage sale last year. It didn't have all the pieces. You can even buy the missing pieces on eBay put it together, make it a complete set and sell it as a complete set. He bought this book seven years ago at a library sale, seven, <laughs> bought it for 50 cents, sold it for $87 and 31 cents. So this is the type of books that I'm talking about that you, you would look at and be like German and Austrian violin makers. Wow. I mean, there's like two people in the world that might be interested in that. You know, that's what you think, but that's, those are the types of things that will 
And if you're looking to do books, these are the types of books that would uh, catch your attention or should catch your attention. Textbooks are another thing. Uh, but anything just weird, nonfiction, um, and not that this is weird, it's just, it's not something that you're going to go into Walmart and see. It's not mass market. It's not, you know, widely published. Jeff sells a lot of records. Here's a, an album set of 10 records. He it was part of a record lot. So he said the buy cost is about 10 cents. He sold in very good condition for $32.97. Now, right now we're all talking about you stuff. We're going to get to the, the new stuff here in a second. And then here's a CRT TV. This was an example in one of the earlier slides, but he sells lots of vintage CRTs. And this was a, a big auction lot of vintage computer equipment that he won the whole lot, the lot for 80 bucks. And so he's made, far, made so far $1,500 profit from just that one lot of $80. And he did that on eBay. That's $55 plus shipping. So the reason people, if you're asking why would somebody want this, a lot of folks who are like my age, are like remembering the older video games and the way some of those video games, like the eight bit games were made for these TVs. And so they just, I don't know if they look better. I mean, this is not my thing at all, but they just, it, it looks more like, you know, like you're in 1985 again. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, if that helps. So those are, the, nice those are right the used <laughs> examples of used items. <laughs> you're laughing about 1985. <laughs> Life was simpler in the 80s. It was. Oh my just, gosh. You know. <laughs> yeah, the old Ataris and the CRT TVs. Um, but so those are those are you saying some of you are like, yeah, that sounds awesome. I'd love to do that. I'd love to go to garage sales and thrift stores. I'd love to uh, do consignment and sell on eBay. Uh, some of folks love the the hunt, love looking for these treasures and uh, and and selling them. And some people are like absolutely not. That is not me. And so that's okay. If if you're more of like, I don't want to mess with having to con continually look for new inventory like that. I don't want to store it. I don't want to ship it myself. I don't want to do eBay at all. Um, then we're going to talk talk to you here in just a second because there's, I mean, most of our students are doing brand new stuff on Amazon. They're doing what we call replenishables. So this is not a replenishable. You're not going to be able, if you go to a garage sale, you may be able to go to another garage sale down the street and find one potentially, but it's not like a guarantee that you're ever going to be able to, to find this again. Now these are abundant. So, but like something like this, who knows how many of those are left or how many of those are left or how many of those are out there right now. So most of the people that are in our group, for example, they're, they're making their living. They're able to quit their job because of what we call replens or replenishable items. And those are things that you can walk into a Walmart and find off the shelf, regular retail pricing and still make a profit on it. So it's, it's guaranteed that you're going to be able to, you're still going to be able to consistent consistently find it and consistently sell it essentially this is not that now the cool thing about these though is most folks that are doing the replans you're not usually consistently able to buy something for eight dollars and sell it for 49.75 or buy it for 80 and make 1500 dollars profit so there's definitely pros and cons on either side um the what we're going to talk about now is a little bit more maybe a little more uh, stable predictable i would say honey what do you think yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, you feel like you have a, a different foundation. It really just, I, a lot of it depends on personality and stuff too, but you can have a better idea, um, you know, or this, like you said, you can't always spend that $80 to get the 1500. Now, mm -hmm. Maybe you can, but it's not something you can bank on happening every month or every week or whatever right. um so you the other be able stuff to do this with your about. the way with the your particular situation with your family it'd be really hard for you to be doing garage sales and thrift stores and estate sales all the time it would be a lot more challenging um you know i yeah and storing it is sounds crazy to me i have stuff for a lot of people in my house i don't want to store a lot of product um some people you know you have the space for that you have the time you want to be packing this up or shipping it, or, you know, you have a team that can help with that. So for some people, it's a good fit. Um, but yeah, for me, I needed simple, basic, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just something I didn't have to think and work as hard for, I guess. <laughs> yep. True. Cause your, your business almost like right now is kind of on autopilot, isn't it? <laughs> For the most part. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I this still, right here I would not be things. autopilot unless you have like people out there shopping for you. Yes, going to and you could sales have for a team. You. Absolutely. Yeah. You could have a team set up for that. Um, yeah. but I think that the really cool stuff 
the really cool thing about all of this and all of the whole e-commerce world is that it can be, um, you know, it, it can be fit to any different family. Like you do things differently than I do. Yes. I do things, you know, we both do different things than all the other people that in all the communities that we're in. Um, and everybody has a different thing that works well for their family. So it's kind of cool to be able to see all these different pieces and some people thrive on this and this is mm-hmm. what they love. Um, it would be a lot more challenging for me to figure out how to do this kind of stuff. My kids in garage sales, it's like <laughs> Christmas and it's, they love it, but it's so chaotic. I don't right? do them often because I'm like, okay, I got to rein everybody in. It's just easier for me to go to a store or to yes. do things online. So, um, you know, you figure out what fits best for you. Um, exactly. I think this stuff is awesome, but it just doesn't make sense with our life either. So, right. yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk about new inventory and I kind of have a feeling that most people are going to be here and this is kind of what you're going for. Uh, and so this will be very applicable to you. So new inventory. So the next uh, level on the pyramid is retail arbitrage. And that's just simply you're finding thing you're doing arbitrage, which is you're buying at one place, selling it for another at another place. In this case, you're buying it at a retail store, selling it on Amazon or eBay or and it could be Facebook marketplace even for new stuff too. But most people are doing Amazon. Uh, just because that's there's so many customers there and uh, and you're going into regular retail stores so now we're going to give you some actual stores instead of saying well inventory is everywhere guys it is that's true and you can probably find something everywhere but we're going to give you some actual names of stores examples of items that you can be thinking about to at least get your brain thinking about oh i've seen that or i know that niche it's always helpful whenever i do a podcast interview and i talk to somebody who's been doing this for a while like honey and uh, say, what's some advice you'd give a new person? And they would say, because if, if I tell you to go into a Walmart and start looking for inventory, holy cow, that's overwhelming. There's just so much. Where do you even start? And the, without fail, they almost always say, start with the aisle that you know. Because if you walk into, let's say you're into sports and outdoors and you know, let's say you, you, you fish a lot, you're going to know if you see a price on Amazon, if that's a high price or not, if that's more than what you would normally spend. And so as you're scrolling through listings, if you see something on, a, you see a, a bait on the shelf for $3, you're going to know that if you see it on Walmart or see it on Amazon for 10, that's going to make you stop and wonder why is that 10, you know, and that it just give you, because, but me, I, I may not know that $10 is too much, but so if you start with something, you know, it's just a huge advantage. So we're going to talk about national stores and regional stores. And there's, I don't know, there's so many examples. We could fill up a whole webinar with different types of stores, but (laughs) national stores are simply stores that exist pretty much anywhere in the country. It's Walmart, Target, Kohl's, Lowe's, Home Depot. We could say stores like I mentioned Joanne Fabrics earlier. There's probably, I don't know that they're in every single city, like some of these stores are, but they're at least a store that pretty much has a presence everywhere. Yep. Honey, is there anything that I'm missing that are major stores that would you say nas- that are national? Um, Dollar General's national. Yes. Right? Um, yes. Dollar Tree. There's a lot of, um, there's, I could probably think of a bunch more, but I'm, they might be regional to me and I just think they're national. Sure. <laughs> so yeah, Dollar General's a great example. We have yes. a lot of people that do Dollar General, do Dollar yes. Tree. Yeah. Dollar Tree is great because you can do, you can be sourcing while you're doing something else. <laughs> Because you know because what everything you know costs. The price is a dollar. <laughs> yep, that's one of those. You know your buy cost. <laughs> so real quick, if you're wanting to do that, like you could be literally in the car, your your spouse is driving, and you're looking for items. You could just look for um, look for Dollar Tree items. Go into the Amazon Seller app if you know some of the brand names that are associated with Dollar Tree or Dollar General. Just scroll through, and if you see a Dollar Tree brand, for example, I know one is called Greenbrier. You can search Greenbrier and just look for bundles, look for multi-packs. And you know, if there's a bundle of three items that the buy cost is going to be three bucks, you don't have to then go to their (laughs) site and check it out. So (laughs) national stores are are a great option. The good news is that these stores are everywhere and pretty much, I mean, most of you probably are within driving distance of all of these. Um, But the bad news is that these stores are everywhere. (laughs) What I mean by that is that there's a lot more competition. It means every other seller out there has access to these stores as well. So they may be able to, you know, be able to see the same deals that you're finding, the same products that you're finding. And there's plenty of products to go around, plenty of customers. But like if you have 
you know, simple economics, if you have 50 sellers on an item and the demand is not very much, the price is going to go down, you know, supply and demands a is a thing in e-commerce too. And so as if, if you notice things that go on sale, um, you'll see those on Amazon pretty quickly, especially if they come from stores like Walmart and the price will go down as the sellers go up and honey's our keep a graph person. Uh, you see as the, as the price um, starts to, as the, the price goes down, the sellers uh, go down to, or, what am I saying here? Sellers go up. The price sellers go up. Price goes often down. Often yeah. goes down. Exactly. Yeah, because as more sellers like, see ah, the deal, they send in inventory. Yeah. The price just tanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So these can be good. There's we have lots and lots and lots of students that sell find replenishable products, products that you can get over and over again at all of these stores, especially Walmart and Target. Um, the bad news is that everybody has access to them. So this is where I want you to be thinking about what's around you because this, whenever I get on a call with somebody that's one-on-one -on -one and they just need a little bit, little bit of help, uh, honey, our, our friend, Lewis Preston, who's in Japan, yeah, you and I yeah. both got a chance to talk to him privately yeah. guys. He's a missionary. He's on my podcast, uh, last week, I think. And he, he wrote me an email saying, Ryan, I'm struggling. This is what I, I'm a missionary in Japan. It's just things are just, he has unique challenges mm -hmm. by being there. He can't go into a Walmart and a Target. <laughs> so he's going to have to do some online arbitrage stuff. And he just was hitting a wall. And so I started just naming, asking him some questions, some of the same questions we're going to ask tonight to get you guys thinking of what might be unique to you in your area. So regional stores are awesome. For, the, for this reason here, because they're not everywhere. So, which means that, you know, Honey has, now I think we're, I think we've got an Ollie's here in North Texas now, but oh. um, these are stores that not every other seller has access to, which means that your competition is way, way less. So think about things that, um, and you may not even realize that some of the stores near you are regional, because if you don't travel a lot or you're just not thinking about it, uh, you may think that everybody has a Meyer, and they don't. It's mostly in the Midwest. They were originated, I think, in Michigan. Is that right? I Meyer believe stores. so. I believe They're so. They're all over Indiana. Like Honey could probably be in a couple of different Meyers within just you know a thirty minute drive. Yep. For her. <laughs> At least, yeah. Um, I have no Meyer anywhere close. I'm in Dallas area. I don't know where the nearest Meyer is for me. We have a dirt cheap. We have a new Ollie's. Piggly Wiggly, I think that's a Southern uh, U.S. Yes. grocery store. Yep. I have nothing like that anywhere close. Sprouts is, I, I think they may be kind of national, but they're not, I don't remember them in Indiana. Um, I don't think we have them. They're in a I've lot of places, but they're, there's just, a, there's a couple close, really close by to us. Safeway grocery stores. I remember when I lived in D.C., those were on the Atlantic. Um, H-E-B is a Texas-based grocery store. Kroger, there's lots of Kroger's. What's cool about Kroger though is they have like in the Northwest, they're called um, Fred's, I think. Fred Meyer. Yeah, Fred Meyer. That's right. Fred, Fred Meyer, Meyer has is connected to Kroger. Yep. yep. And, and I was gonna say QFC, but I don't know if they are or not. So QFC, QFC. is another um, regional grocery. Oh, so it's Albertsons. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of different regional grocery stores are really good for that actually. But yes. there's a lot of places that you can find things there that maybe it's similar. Like I know at Meyer, you know, you can buy your Cheerios or whatever, but maybe it's a different size than you find in a Walmart. You know, maybe it's a no clue. I'm just totally throwing this up. Maybe it's like a 14 ounce instead of a 16 ounce box of something. You know, I don't know what sizes right. they are, um, right. but there's things like that. They're going to be specific to your area that other people aren't going to have the mm -hmm. same access to that kind of stuff. And it can be specific types of items as it well, can. but mm -hmm. Um, and also another thing that a lot of our sellers do, they sell store brands. So Meyer has yes. their own store brand. Uh, HEB has their own store brand, meaning for example, like, you know, um, I always use the green bean example. So there's green giant green beans, but also Walmart has great value brand. HEB, I'm pretty sure has their own brand of green beans. It's just, it's probably the same green beans that are in the Walmart can. <laughs> it just has a different label on the outside. And so those all potentially have different listings on Amazon. And so if you live near an HEB, you have access to those things that all these other parts of the country have do not have access to, 
or may not even know exist. Some people have never heard of HEB or some people never, never, never heard of Bucky's. That's a big, that's a gas station actually in Texas. <laughs> yeah. I think they have some in Alabama or across <laughs> the South, but it's, it's a gas station. That's like a Walmart and they have products that are Bucky's brand products that mm-hmm. sell on Amazon that honey has no, there's no Bucky's even anywhere close to her. Nope. Right. No, nope. I've heard of them, but that's it. There is yep. nowhere, nowhere near us. <laughs> So that would be an advantage. Anybody that has a Bucky's near them, look for products that have the Bucky's brand that's unique. You're not looking for the things that you're going to find at, you know, a Walmart. Now, honey is right though. It could be something unique. It could be that same type of Cheerios, but just in a different box. It could be um, some regions have different Oreos, or maybe they just their Oreos may come out at a different time. Um, look for exclusive stuff. If yeah. it says exclusive. Um, look at that because, you know, Piggly Wiggly may get the Oreos before Meyer does. And who knows? You just, you have advantages depending on where you live. And every region has regional stores to them that the other regions don't have access to. So one thing you could be doing is just think about what stores are near me that when I travel, I don't remember. Like if I'm, you know, I'm in Texas. So HEB, there's a there's only one in Dallas, I think. We have central markets. But when I travel to Indiana, I know that there's no HEB around and vice versa. Just think about, I just traveled here and what is not there? When I went on my vacation, what were the grocery stores near there? Or you know, what did that location not have that I do have at home? Or even do a search on Google for regional stores, Iowa. And maybe there's a, a certain store that you've just grown up with and you think, oh, doesn't everybody have this store? Um, no, not necessarily. And this is also, I was just thinking um, like Rite Aid, CVS. Yes. Some of those places, there's a lot of those places that are really good places to find product. But like, we don't have a Rite Aid anywhere out here. I used to live in the Northwest and that's what mm-hmm. there was. Um, but yes. we have CVS here and Walgreens and other things. So there are a lot of places like that. And mm-hmm. um, the pharmacy places, which also have a lot of grocery and you know, other home items and candy and all kinds of stuff. Um, so those are other regional places as well. Yes. The pharmacies all have their own, uh, over the counter medicines. I know we have some folks in our group that sell that type of stuff uh, over the counter that are region that are, uh, if you, if you, I guess if you have to be, if you're approved for the, yeah. would it be health and personal care? Yeah. They, I think they have new, res- new restrictions for like, uh, vitamins and that kind of stuff now, but, um, you can sell it on yeah, eBay. there's, there's so much stuff. There's so much stuff. I don't know if you have on here Menards. Oh, I forgot Menards. Yeah, yes. Menards is big. Menards um, is in the Midwest. Yes, Menards is. I think it's uh, actually in another slide. With it's like a Lowe's. It's like a Lowe's. I, I thought I saw that. Um, it's like a Lowe's kind of thing, you know, Home Depot, but it's um, very much just a regional area. Now, Menards, if you've never been in one, it's like a Lowe's, but they also have like, um, they have aisles of food and groceries mm-hmm. and um, lotions and soaps. And I mean, they've got all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've actually found replenishable items from Menards that are not even like home improvement things, you know? Mm. Um, so there's a lot of stuff like that, that you can keep in mind as well. Um, if you have any kind of stores and it can be, you know, it might be grocery and it might be one of these other things, but it might also be, um, you know, some kind of a craft store that's local to you, or it might be, a you know, a home improvement type store. It can be a lot of different kinds of things as well. Absolutely. So yeah, honey, tell drugs. me this, let's yeah. say that, um, that you, you come down to Texas and you went into an HEB store and let's say that you've never been one before. Where would you, where would you start? Um, I mean, cause there's a lot, we have folks in here that are already selling on Amazon and maybe do some traveling. And what's a tip that you would tell them if you walk into a, a new area, new store, you've never been to what, what's a tip you would give somebody? Well, I think it's kind of what you already said, and maybe this, maybe this doesn't make sense, but to me, I would go to the areas that I'm still familiar with. You know, maybe uh-huh. I don't know um, their specific store or their brand or whatever, but I might look for things that I've never seen, or I might look for the areas that I'm familiar with. Yeah, I know I can sell, you know, crackers or chips or whatever stuff, and I've sold that and it's been well, or I'm going to go to their canned fruit section or whatever I think I, I know I sold well before, and I'm going to go there. I'm going to look and see if there's something that's, you know, maybe similar to what I've sold before. Maybe it's a different brand of something. Um, 
I know um, when I lived in the Northwest, they had this brand of chili, canned chili Mm -hmm. that you could get there and it was awesome. And it was like our favorite canned chili, which is funny because I don't don't do like canned chili now. We, you know, I got a big crew to feed, so we just make it ourselves, but um, it was really good stuff. Well, you can't get it here. So Mm -hmm. that's that brand of chili that they only sold in the Northwest is a really good thing to to consider. Wow. If they have this here, I can, you know, people that are not from areas, like I lived for in Seattle for six, seven years. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of years that that I had access to that. Now I can't get it. If I want it, I'm not going to go drive to Seattle to go get my chili. I'm, I'm going to say, wait a minute, maybe I can find it online somewhere. I right. mean, um, Amazon's the place that people go for that. Sometimes right. eBay, sometimes other places, but really for something like that, I'm going to, I'm going to go to Amazon and say, is somebody selling this because I want to get it and I don't want to have to drive to Seattle to get it. So I'll pay somebody else to take care of that for me. Um, exactly. It's things like that, you know, things that might be a regional thing. If I'm aware of those things, or it might be things that I'm looking for that are maybe similar to things I, I know that I've bought, um, yep, like this right not, here. Yep. <laughs> yep. This is awesome. <laughs> I, I was just said food's the easiest one to think of. There's yep. other things too, but food's a great example. You mentioned with your chili, Mike sells as a brand. I've mentioned this before in webinars with honey. It's a, it's a potato chip company that it's in the Midwest and we don't have it here. I remember when living in Indiana, you go to every grocery store and they'd have yep. Mike sells potato <laughs> chips. Now I don't have them. So if, if I was like, Oh my gosh, I miss Mike sells. Well, I'm not going to drive to Indiana just for chips. I would go to see my parents, but not just for potato chips. So I'm going to go on Amazon. <laughs> Think about, and I'm in Texas. So, you know, salsa and barbecue sauce come to mind. I know that these brands are not everywhere at every store, so especially if you lived in an area like honey lived in Seattle area and now she's not there, you're going to miss certain products. And so where are you going to find those things? You're going to, you're going to go online. What a burger is a hamburger chain that's in Texas, Oklahoma, maybe Arkansas too, I think, but their condiments sell really well on Amazon. And I can get those at my local grocery store. I do not think honey can walk into her local Kroger and find Whataburger condiments. Not yet. At least I've not (laughs) seen those. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) Steak and shake. Actually. Now I know they're a national, they're all over the country. Um, but steak and shake seasoning sell on Amazon too. I've sold those before. Have you? (laughs) Yep. Awesome. (laughs) So guys, if you're thinking about restaurants that are close to you, restaurant chains that have condiments. Um, so not only grocery stores, but restaurant chains that might be close to you that have things that that sell, I know like in, um, in the South, there's a hamburger place called Milo's and their, their iced tea is really famous. Not that you're going to sell iced tea on Amazon, but I'm um, just an example like that. There might be something that you just frequent, uh, that you don't realize necessarily is not everywhere and start just start searching for those brands. Cracker barrel is a fun place to yes. source too. That's a restaurant yes. that has like a whole store. So yes. they have all kinds of things that I've sold um, on Amazon as well. It's, it's a regional thing They're I don't think they're everywhere. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Yeah. All right. So the, we're just going to fly through some of these, honey, do you want to talk about, I mean, these are examples of some of the things that uh, some these of our are students legitimate have sourced things. in the past. Yeah. I've actually sold quite a few of these things. These are legitimate things. Um, yeah. Just going through this quickly. Um, when you're looking at this time of year, you know, you're going to find the stuff like there's, you know, the Halloween candy things, the, Mm -hmm. um, the rice, the Christmas rice, rice, crispy things. There's a lot of that stuff that's popular and they may not be available in your store. You may not be able to find them or honestly, you're just busy and you just, you know, I need somebody to send it to my house instead of me getting it. So these are things you can find. Um, it can be anything from big to tiny to small, Um, you know, you've got that big bouncer things. There's a lot, you can sell big things. If Mm -hmm. people are willing to, um, pay what it's going to cost you to ship it, then absolutely. You can sell that kind of stuff. Those little chocolate things there actually, I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but I did find those little, Oh, the mercy. Yes. I've got those that Aldi before Uh multiple times, um, sold a lot of different kinds of that. Um, you know, this time of year, people are looking for easy ways to shop for all that kind of stuff. And so you can quickly provide those things for them. Mm -hmm. Countless board games have I sold. Um, Mm -hmm. I bought them myself, (laughs) you know, (laughs) my kids love games. So, um, Aldi can be a great place for a lot of these things. Um, but really all kinds of items. It is, it's not just the food. It's not just the toys. Um, there's a lot of things, but if you think about, I think for me, a lot of times I think about what 
Am I buying online? And maybe I don't sell the exact same brand of the exact same thing, but I think, okay, I've bought, you know, snacks for my kids recently. I've bought um, some candy that I couldn't find in my local store that, mm-hmm. you know, like a special Christmas candy that my kids liked and I couldn't find it anywhere else. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to go look online for it. And that just kind of gets your mind going, thinking, what else would someone else be looking for that I can provide? And it really is everything. People buy everything on there. Right. You know, you don't just buy the big things. People buy everything on there now. They so, do. Yeah. Yeah. These are some items like at Aldi that are, haven't been in Aldi in a while, but I remember there was a, always a section of just odd things that aren't the <laughs> yes. grocery. Yes. And so just look those things up. Don't just walk by them like, hey, I'm not interested in those because maybe you aren't, but other people may be. So just take out your Amazon seller app and look up Rice Krispies Treats Christmas Stocking Kit. Yeah. And can you find it on there? And is it selling? I mean, it's just simple stuff like that. Just look quickly. Um, and then you may hit on a winner like, oh my gosh, these are all on sale for three bucks. And I, they're selling on Amazon for 22. Now I need to go to every Aldi in my area and buy all of them. That's how this yeah. thing yeah. starts. You get addicted to it and then you're, and you're sucked in. <laughs> <laughs> Barnes and Nobles also, because they have clearance sales usually every year. We've sold a ton of Barnes and Noble stuff. Anything here that jumps out at you? I don't see that. I don't see your screen. Oh, sorry. That's it's right. not popped in there yet. Let's no, see. I just see the Aldi one. Let's see. There we go. There we go. I don't know why it took. Yep, I have done the Barnes and Noble clearance table. Um, lots of books, games, puzzles, whatever. Um, you know, again, that stuff might be a little more difficult these days. Just recently on Amazon, but this stuff will do well on other platforms. Um, I don't think we had even listed on there. You can actually sell on Walmart.com now. Yeah, um, that's right. So there are a lot of other places that you can. Um, be a third-party seller and be a uh, sell other products and other things. So, you know, finding, I think for Barnes and Noble, our biggest thing there was not really finding the regular price stuff, but I could do really well on their, um, their clearance. They'd have yes. huge clearance sales where they were just clearing out a lot of stuff to make room for new inventory. And they would do that at least once a year. I think some of the stores I've seen them do a couple times a year. Um, mm. And so we would go and find all kinds of stuff for that and find um, other places to sell that. And it was awesome. And it, really is all kinds of stuff electronics it really and, is yep yep oh our, I, you know, it was fun. I was doing these i was doing this presentation earlier today putting together and malane comes by and says you're looking at bras <laughs> no um just to sell presentation for tonight but bras yep. do sell really well and you, these are some of the places that that i've sold i've bought a lot of bras from kohl's <laughs> i have filled carts up at kohl's <laughs> Of yeah, they have some crazy clearance stuff. Um, and Kohl's is not always a fan of you <laughs> you selling their stuff elsewhere, but if they don't know, I just have a card of them. So um right. yeah, so um yeah, this is a thing that you can find at any of these places for super cheap, um, really affordable, and then sell it for a lot more on Amazon because people are willing to pay that. Um, mm-hmm. you know, you go with where the market is, and so that's where people are wanting. The convenience of buying it online and um, you can do that. These are all places, great places to sell that. Absolutely. Whatever. Yeah, I bought sells, a lot of shoes at Marshalls and TJ Maxx too. And Ross sold That's shoes. Where I though. buy my kids' shoes because yep. they go through a lot. <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> yes, oh, this I lots. have legitimately sold um just I think almost every single thing on here um, from Big Lots. Big Lots has been one of my favorite places to source for um, a while. I don't do quite so much anymore because I do a lot more online. But um, yeah, they have everything from your snack stuff to your cleaning things. Um, Specifically sold that garbage truck. Countless. Anytime I could find those in a Big Lots, I would sell it. Um, Their holiday holiday things like... um, not even just the inflatable, like that's one of those big giant inflatable things you put in your yard for Christmas, but they all kinds of, um, you know, tablecloths. And you think about the stuff that people want in the holiday season, they're looking for, you know, some of it's the seasonal decor for their home. Some of it's the food, the stuffing, the, um, you know, box potatoes, if that's how they do that. And, you know, I mean, all of those kind of things do really well, the pumpkin treats, the peppermint treats, um, but Big Lots has stuff also like, you know, your shampoos and other things as well. And you can find this stuff for really good deals. They have a lot of, um, you know, coupons and sale times as well. Mm-hmm. In additional, in addition to like, I could go in a lot of times and maybe it won't be as consistent in carrying the same things as a Walmart, but there's a lot of Big Lots you can go into. They're going to have similar items 
And I know I can pretty much go in and find, you know, a different kind of pop tart there. Um, yep. So there's things like that, that you can look for and absolutely um, send in online and sell it for a profit. Yeah. This word is always going to jump out at me. Limited yes. edition. Yes. Look um, for if those. You're in one of these stores, don't make the mistake that I used to do, which would, I would just pick, pick up something like this that has kind of a no-name brand. I would scan it and make, it's not there on Amazon. Not true. Now it may not no. be, but yep. do what we always talk about reverse sourcing, type in um, the no name brand with, you know, whatever the package says, you know, inflatable snowman, five and five feet, whatever it is on the package. It's very, there's a very good chance that it's there on Amazon yep. and selling, especially if it's something like that at this time of year. CVS. Yep. They've got clearance deals as well. <laughs> Um, we have done really well on some sale clearance kind of things. Um, I honestly, I haven't found a lot of replens there. I know some people do. Um, I think it just depends. And this is just a store I'm not in as often, and I don't recognize a lot of the pricing for a lot of these types of things. Um, so I think you go to areas that you're familiar with, um, places that you're familiar with types of items you're familiar with, and it can help you, um, your business to have an idea of, wait a minute, is this selling for a lot more? Or am, am I going to stand here guessing a whole lot because I don't know if this is really a good deal or not. So, um, yeah. Five below. I have sold countless toys from there. Um, that's another great place that you can at least have an idea. Everything there is five dollars or five less. Bucks. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that helps that you're, um, you know, not guessing as far as that goes. Um, they've got a lot. They have a wide variety. They have some kind of home decor things I've sold, um, seasonal, like summer items, like pool toy kind of things. Um, I've done that. I've done a lot of different games, different figures. And the same thing for me, like I have multiple of these now. Um, they actually just put one in Anderson. So I have multiple ones of these around me. Oh, cool. I can go and say, okay, I'm going to find it at this one. And then this other oh. one that's, you know, 20 minutes down the road or whatever, I can go get more of that same item. Um, if I'm already in the area and um, send in more of that stuff. And so this is something that you can have that is what we call a replenishable item. I can keep going back over and over and finding for the most part, you know, unless they're out of stock, I can find these things and, and send them in again because I know that they're gonna sell. And as I see them selling, I just send more of the same thing in. So I'm not having to look everywhere at every, every garage sale, hoping that I find something. I can at least have a fairly good idea that I'm gonna find more of this again if I found it at one of them. Exactly. There's our Menards. Love Menards. Yeah, they've got all kinds of stuff. <laughs> um, that sign, I think, is a that's a Home Depot, maybe. Yeah, they're they're I think the so. orange. Yeah. Um, but all this stuff here is actually stuff that Menards does have. <laughs> they have, um, you know, the chocolate squares. They got your dishwasher soap. They've got the Christmas things and light bulbs and all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah. Right now, honestly, Lowe's would probably have most of this, and I would assume Home Depot too. It's a little farther for me, but, um, you know, you can find all of these kinds of things. And while there's a picture of clearance here, you don't have to look for that. You can find no. the regular price items. Um, I have sold quite a bit of food from Menards that is just regular price, you know, like yeah. some soups and different things that, you know, maybe there, maybe there are other places, but that's just the only place I ever noticed it at Menards. <laughs> so I send in stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of different here's aisles and aisles of food. It's really funny, but my dad loves Menards and it's uh -huh. like, I don't know, maybe that's where he gets his groceries. I don't know, but it's <laughs> like this, they make this aisle for the men to go, you know, work on their projects and then grab their pizza on the way out. It's so right. crazy to me, but it's really cool. And there's all kinds of stuff there. It is a really cool store. I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Home goods is super fun. Um, I have found things, everything from, you know, they, they do have toys, um, but they have a lot of home decor. I've done really well with a lot of their kitchen type items, um, you know, baking and cooking kind of things. Again, that's probably something I do a whole lot of. So I probably just recognize the pricing for that, but um, it can be a really, can be another good place to source. This is us just showing you it really can be everywhere Tuesday morning. It really morning. can, but I wanted to give you some Anything. examples of actual products yes. that we've sold or students have sold before. Yep. Martha Stewart, all the craft things. I've sold multiple of those. The skinny uh -huh. syrups, the Hickory Farms, um, Playmobil, all of these things. Um, 
maybe not the specific Playmobil, but I've sold all of these things. These are legitimate things that you can find somewhere and you're providing it on Amazon for someone that doesn't have these stores or these items around them. So you're providing that convenience for them. Walgreens, Walgreens has some exclusive toys. So if you are able to sell toys and, um, no, or even if you're not, you can just send them to eBay or somewhere else. But Walgreens does have a lot of exclusive toys. They've got, you know, your vitamin things. If you're able to sell that on Amazon or wherever else you want to sell that so many different types of items that Walgreens has, these are legitimate items that have been bought and sold. <laughs> and black Friday is coming up. So this is my story here. We, this is a black Friday. One year we went into a world market. This is, I think maybe a regional store. I mean, I think they have them all. It's not like all over, but I don't think it's, it's not unique to North Texas for sure. Um, I think there's one in Indianapolis. Yep. I mean, yep. it's not like it's out too. there as, as Walmart, you're not going to find yeah. as many as there is Walmarts, yeah. but, um, but the, I walked, we walked into a, a world market one year on black Friday and it's as a lot of stores are, it's overwhelming. If you've never been there before, you mm -hmm. don't know, like, what am I, what am I doing here? Where am I going to start? And I just prayed a little prayer, Lord, show me where the good stuff is. So I started <laughs> walking in the back. I felt led to go to the back of the store and the very, very, very back wall. There was a whole bunch of tea sitting on a shelf and these happened to be buy one, get one half off. So essentially they were 25% off and which is not a great, maybe they were buy one, get one free. Um, I don't remember exactly, but it wasn't like, oh my gosh, that's such a great deal in the face of it. But when I started scanning these and typing these brand names in and looking at the, the different flavors, like, wow, these are all, a lot of these are very profitable. We spent thousands of dollars on tea that day, <laughs> so, um, but it sold. It did. It sold, <laughs> sold well. It was very, very, very profitable. Um, and that's one of those things that it would be a replan only if it's on sale. And there are things like that. There, there are a lot of things, most of the things that honey sells that are replans, even at regular price are profitable at regular price. This may not be all the time. Um, but if you can catch it when it's on sale, we have students that do really well just with cyclical replans. Things that go on sale. Yep. Right. It's on sales. Go buy all of them. Um, yep. so if you know when the sales are some, um, a lot of grocery stores will do their sale cycles, you know, every four weeks or six weeks or whatever that is. Um, and there are regular uh, other stores too. Um, I mean, Walmart doesn't do sales, but, you know, Target or other places will have their sales, a lot of their sales and cycles. And so you can have an idea of, okay, well, it's only on sale every four weeks. So every four weeks, I'm going to go back to this place and buy enough for that time frame until I can go back in four weeks and buy it again. So you still have that idea of I can consistently buy it for this price. Um, it's just maybe not every day, but I know when I can do that. So exactly. Yeah, and lastly, guys, here just last uh, slide before we talk about uh, ways you can go deeper in this. This is these are some questions when I get on a call one on one with somebody that is struggling. I don't do a lot of that, but sometimes I'll if somebody emails me and they just like, man, I just really need help. Um, I'll either you know say, hey, we have somebody named Honey Woods who's good at that, or I got folks that um, are awesome at doing these uh, you know one off type of calls with folks just to get their head on straight, but. One guy in particular, I'll just give you an example. Some of the things I told him that we mentioned him earlier, honey also was gracious and spent um, a decent amount of time with him on a call, but Lewis Preston out of, of Japan, I, I, I asked him what's, what's unique about your situation. So he's from Canada and he's a Canadian American. He's dual citizenship and lives in Japan. So mm -hmm. he had um, definitely some challenges, but he also had some unique opportunities in that, you know, he had access to products that are in Japan that he can sell on the, in here in the US and Canada. And he's doing that. He's doing arbitrage. It's really interesting. Doing arbitrage from Japan to US, US to Japan, Canada to Japan, um, and, and vice versa. And so he's just kind of found his niche now of things that work for him with his unique of situation. So what are some things that might be unique to you? Where do you live? We talked about the regional stores. Think about maybe if you have a full-time job, what products, what relationships do you have related to that job? What um, people, who do you know that's at a regular job? What products do they have at their, their place of business? Who might they know? Um, do you frequent, like, for example, are you friends with the guy that runs the pool store nearby? Because, you know, those are, that's something unique that like a lot, those are some products that are just harder for every other Amazon seller to get. Like, you're not going to be able to, um, 
get an account with some certain types of companies. So somebody who has a brick and mortar store may have a relationship with a wholesale company that if you know them or just become friends with them and say, hey, you want to sell more of your product? I know how to sell products online. So do you want to sell more of this? And just do some type of deal with them. Like we used to sell uh, pool supplies because I had a friend that had a relationship with a local pool store guy. I think it wasn't like he was friends. He became friends with them because he could sell online. And so we just bought pool products from him through his account and paid him 10% over his, his wholesale price. And that gave us access to a supplier that we never would have been able to on our own. We could have picked up the phone, called that same pool supplier, and they would say, nope, sorry, you don't have a store or you're, you're not in the pool business. They only worked with pool people. They were okay with their products on Amazon, but it had to be through that guy, through that relationship. So think about those types of things. What's unique to your area? What interests do you have? What experience do you have? Um, did you like one example, like let's say that you are in the medical field, maybe you can buy home healthcare type products that if I tried to call that company, they're going to be like, no, you're not in the healthcare industry. Anything that's going to be a barrier for other sellers is going to be something that you want to start looking into. Maybe you are at a, or no, somebody in the auto parts. Maybe that you have access to wholesale distributors of products uh, that have things that are just unique, different, weird, boring, boring products sell very well. Yeah. Things that you would think that's who in the world would buy that <laughs> just start searching for those things on Amazon. And you may be surprised at some of the boring products that sell. Um, so just, and this is where you, you may take some time and go back over this. I'll send out a replay to everybody tomorrow, but you may want to think about and get out a piece of paper. And as I'm reading out these things, just start jotting down names of people that come to mind when I say some of this stuff. Lewis, for example, his, um, his uncle runs um, a couple of restaurants. And so because of that relationship, he potentially has access to restaurant supply companies that only restaurants can buy from. So you guys get my point there. I mean, that's something that most people aren't going to go to the work to try to do that. But even if they did, they may have a, a wall there because they're not a restaurant. They don't, they're just not in that business. So, but it's no, no big deal for somebody like his, his uncle to order extra cases of this ketchup. It sells really well on Amazon. He's going to buy two for his restaurant, two cases, and he's going to get Lewis an extra case. I don't know if Lewis is using that relationship or not, but that's an example of something that he could do. Um, just if you have somebody that's in a restaurant business or any type of business that's are buying from a wholesale company, see if you can get a list of the products that they have available. I have a friend that's in the tortilla business and also has a little tiny um, shop that he sells tacos and things. And he has access to companies like Cisco Foods and Ben E. Keith Foods, big, huge distributors that I could not probably get an account with. He already has an account. So I could easily just go to him and say, hey, you know, uh, Steve, do you can I get a list of all of their products and their software? You can run those product lists through and it'll tell you what, what the good ones are selling on Amazon. Our friend Jim Cockrum has a, he just posted this in the My Silent Team group. He has a friend who ha owns a hardware store, a, a, an Indiana based hardware store. And so he got access because of that relationship to all of their suppliers. I think he's got access to their backend computer system for ordering. So he can see all of the products that they have access to purchase and can now potentially buy all of those that are profitable. So he's going to have a VA go through that or pull a list and use a software tool. So pretty sweet things. If you just think about who you might know, uh, what is something that you have access to that's unique Honey, anything else come to mind or anything I've not said that? No, this is awesome. This is this is the kind of stuff that sets you apart that will help um, you to have the less competition that, um, you know, you won't be just selling the same thing that everybody else is selling. This stuff is what really um, helps your business to um, even have more stability, <laughs> you know, right. because you don't have the competition. You don't have 30 other people trying to sell the exact same thing. These are special things that can set your business apart and can make it even more potential. It has more potential profit. Um, you know, sure. if you, if you know what you're doing and you, um, work on those relationships, absolutely. This mm -hmm. is just awesome. Absolutely. Great. Questions. Are you in farming or do you know a farmer? They have access yep. to unique products that other people either can't get because they're not in the farming business or don't even know exist, yep. but only farmers know that they're, they're out there. 
Uh, are you a teacher or no a teacher? Teachers have access to certain teacher supply stores. Maybe there's maybe a lot of people can buy from those, but they may be sources that not everybody even knows about. So we didn't even touch on online arbitrage. We talked about retail stores, regional and national, but then there's all the .com sites that you could potentially order from. And there's some yeah. no name .com sites that the general public have no idea that even exist, but they have profitable products that you can order from. And that's pretty much all Honey's doing now is online arbitrage. You're not going into stores now. You're buying from online stores. We did this week just, you know, for fun because it's Q4. But um, yeah, I I really almost never, ever go anymore. Um, It's a lot easier for me to just keep reordering the same stuff that I know will sell. Um, You know, I know how to do the research. Is it selling? All right. Well, I'm going to send more of this in. Um, Yeah, it's. It really can be done completely from home. Um, if you have someone else that will help get your products to Amazon for you, there it could be completely hands off. Most of my products, other than us, you know, going in the store this week, um, I don't have to see it. I don't have to touch it. I just have to send it and have someone else take care of it for me. So um, those things are really awesome too about this business. Uh, Carl says, I know some people in the other countries. Any tips if I can learn about import rules and procedures? Great question, man. I would. Uh, uh, that would be a question, Carl, that I'd ask in a, in a group. You're probably in the in Jim's My Silent Team group. Ask somebody there. There's got to be somebody that knows more about that. Or you could. Um, there are um, sourcing agents that would know a question like that. There's people that um, do shipping all the time. That, that would some be of it depends on the country, for. too. So some of the countries totally. are going to have different rules. Um, some of like it might just be as simple as having, if you have a, a friend that... Uh, can just ship you stuff air freight. Um, there's not, there's not the same types of, you know, it's not like you're putting it on a boat and having a container and it's waiting at the dock somewhere. If you air freight things that are smaller, um, that just makes things so much easier. And it's like you use DHL. The DHL would be a good per- good company to reach out to about that. Yep. For sure. Um, so guys, this is literally just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much content. This is just kind of give you a taste of what we do in our legends group. And so I just want to give an opportunity to you guys that feel like this might be a fit for you to go further. Uh, it, this, it's a family legends is a family. This is a picture of our, our reunion that we had in 2019. And, uh, it's just a lot of fun when we get together and it's, it's just a group, an e-commerce group of, of people that are just doing this together where it, no matter what I would say find a community of people. Don't do this alone. If you're going to build this business, either you're starting to do it or you're, you're growing it, find a group of people that you can be a part of. It's just more fun. It's easier. There's going to be guarantee like Carl's question. They, there's people that know that stuff that instead of having to go online and do a search, like you can go into a group of trusted people and say, Hey, I need help with this. Cause there's people that have been down this road before that save you hours and hours of time, lots of heartache, save you a lot of money too. So that's what the legends is about. Uh, I am, like I said, I'm addicted to our success stories. And these are just, I'll just scroll through here quick, quickly. These just a snippet of people that have uh, allowed me to use their picture that have, are doing this full time or uh, either as a result of legends or um, maybe some of them were doing, doing it full time before, but they, because of their Amazon business, they were able to quit their job and be home. And there's Honey and her family, Nate and Kate Chaddock. That's an awesome story. Kate brought uh, Nate home from his teaching job. Uh, Jimmy was an insurance in the insurance industry, and now he's able to be home. Um, there's so many people in our group that are now doing this full time. And they, um, I mean, most of them are say it's because of the Legends group, because of what, I mean, here's some new, now Steven's been home for a while, but he just gave me his picture. He's in the UK. We got a couple more people that uh, just gave gave me their picture too. There's I know there's a lot more um, Adam and Skylar and then Mark and Risa, friends of ours too. But guys, the reason I do this is I want your name here because I want you to have that freedom, whatever that looks like for you. And you know what? It's not a matter of like making a million dollars or being a billionaire. You know, you may just need five hundred extra dollars a month, and that's going to allow you to do some really neat things that you've not been able to do. Take the pressure off. Maybe you need to make $5,000 a month to be able to come home from your job. All of that is completely possible. Like a $5,000 a month business, honestly, is not even, um, they're still seeing the iceberg pit, guys. Let's see. No, I can see the Hall of Fame. Maybe that's an older switching now. Okay, cool. Yeah, Canvas sometimes is funny, but the, um, it's, it's not about the number. Every, every person's 
number is different, what they need to get to that next level to do what they need to do. And it's all possible with an Amazon business. And like a $5,000 a month profit business is a business that's only doing, honey, what, about fifteen dollars to $20,000 in sales a month? Something yeah, like ab- that. It can be, yeah. Um, a lot of people, you know, your profits are, I think a lot of people, it, it averages around 20%. Mm-hmm. So, yep. So that's not a very, that's not even that large of a business. That may sound like a huge thing for if you're just getting started, but it's so, so, so doable. Uh, And that can be almost on autopilot, like what Honey is doing right now with with sourcing products online. So let me show you real quick and then I'll let you guys go because I know it's uh, getting late and some of you may got Thanksgiving to start cooking for (laughs) or something. Uh, so we have never, ever, ever, ever done this before. We're doing a nope. special Black Friday sale for Legends for 50% off the annual, the annual plan. So you have seven days to do this. Um, I'm not one of those like, oh, there's so much pressure. There's no pressure. If this, if this is something that you feel like is a fit for you, jump in. If not, that's cool. Uh, get in some community somewhere. I just know our group is awesome. I know the success stories that we're pumping out and I just want more of them. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to join if something that you feel like is what you need to go to the next, um, next level. But, uh, it's a, if a lot of people ask what's legends, it's, I'll say it's a family and that may not mean much to some folks because maybe they don't like their family or they're like, I don't want another family. I, my family's already weird. Um, so, ours is uh, fun and nice. <laughs> It is, but it really is a family of e-commerce sellers and it's a, you have access to a 24 seven coach in the form of that Facebook group where you can ask questions any time of day and you'll get an answer. We have really cool software, uh, a sourcing app that um, is one of the best Um, hours and hours and hours of exclusive content here. These perks that we're always adding onto them, but it's a live, there's a library of information in legends. We have a whole accounting course, a Walmart course, for those of you who want to start selling on Walmart and outsourcing course, I'm big on that. Cause I think in order to be able to go where you might want to go in your business, you're going to need to hire help or hire, get tools. But we have a course on how to do that right within the group. We have an awesome VA service that's for legends members. We have a discounts like for prep centers, honey could not do what she's doing without a prep center. If she, mm-hmm did not have a prep center, she'd be prepping all of her own items and just wouldn't have the time with her family that she wants to have. So prep centers are huge. They are, these are places that will receive your inventory for you and they will send it off to Amazon for you. So you don't have to do that part by far. This is the job that most people say that they hate the most of an Amazon business is they love (laughs) the shopping. They love finding stuff, but when they get it back home, like, Oh, great. Now I got to send all this in. Um, (laughs) It can be That's tedious. Not the funnest it can be part. boring. So, <laughs> prep centers are a godsend. I use them. We have an Amazon accounts uh, suspension specialist in the group who can help you if you get in trouble with Amazon or need have questions about just compliance. We have accountability groups. Um, Legends members get free access to the Q4 group that's going on right now. Uh, let's see, we got deals in the group, but it did, we just keep growing and growing and growing and adding yeah. to it. You get access to a private Facebook group, access to a private membership site where all the content lives. It lives on Facebook too. But for those of you that prefer more of a clean look, we have it in a membership site. You can search the videos by keyword and find any video that we've ever done that has that keyword in it. So that's really, really cool. You can speed up the videos. I cannot, I have to speed up videos in order to get through the amount of content (laughs) that I need to get through. So it allows you to do that so that if you have a an hour long webinar, you can get it done in 30 minutes or less, depending on how fast you can um, understand them. Here's the sourcing app that we have. And by far, this is the biggest thing. It's just the testimonials of people that are saying, this group is amazing. This is what it's done for me. And this is what I'm most proud of is just seeing seeing these success stories. So guys, we've never done this before. If you, Legends is 197 per month. If you multiply that by 12, it's 2364. We're doing a 50% off thing. It ends in next Tuesday. So if you want to jump in, it's amzlegends.com forward slash legends 50 off. I'll put the, put the link in the chat here. And if that's not a fit for you and some of you wants to jump in, we also have a dollar trial that we can, I can tell you about later. You can just email me and say, Hey, I want the dollar trial. Uh, yeah. Legends has been around for how many years now? December, 2016. Yeah. So 
a while, the majority of my online selling time has been a part of legends and they legitimately have never done this. So this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this. I was like, wow, that's really great. That's cool. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So this is our, this is our sale. would love to, if you feel like this is a fit for you, would love to, to j jump in. And guys, any questions that we didn't answer? We've got, um, how does one join accountability groups? Uh, okay. That's uh, we just finished one that uh, Sue Pruitt did. Sorry, that's the wrong link. And so we'll do another one, um, starting in January. Okay. Um, guys, and then hold on. I think let me see if we got anything else. Um, we have yeah, the first just... accountability group was for um, the kind of the newer folks at the warrior and the gladiator stage of the success path. Um, but we're always looking for ways to serve you guys in a, in a you know unique way or different way or better way. So let us know what you want. But that's, we're always looking for new ideas. And if you're a person that you know likes to um, just sit and consume content and you know, I would rather watch the videos or read this thing or whatever. Then we have all of that. Like Ryan was showing you in the group on the website, we've got all that there. If you're a person that kind of needs that little extra push and motivation, we do have the accountability groups that we're working on, making sure we're providing those for you guys. So, um, somebody can kind of be a little more helping you along, but really the Facebook group is a community. Um, you know, we have, uh, we call them family reunions. We have conferences, um that we can get together you can meet with other sellers and talk questions um the keep of videos in the group um yeah I'll, let's just go there i'll just show oh. alessi is a, a brand new member and alessi I, I owe you a video i always do a video for everybody that joins legends and i haven't got to yours yet i hope i'm saying your name correctly too um let's see okay let's go to facebook All right, so this is the this is the behind the scenes, and uh, so there's two places guides. you can see all the content. We got the guides, which is the old unit section of Facebook, and so Keepa in in Facebook, it's under the um, the Gladiator level, the success path, because that's the level where they need to really learn Keepa and get confident with Keepa. So go to guide number nine, and then in the membership site, though, let's see if I can. Do this real fast for those of you that are not in legend you can kind of sneak peek of what we what it looks like so this is what the membership site looks like it's just all the same content that's in facebook but it's organized just in a different way so it looks different um, we have the success path here so if you're what what i love about this is that there's so much content and so it can be very overwhelming but if you just follow the success path and then here's the success path right here so if you can see where you are on the path then you'll know what to do next so that you can kind of cut out all the clutter because there's so much content that there's a lot of it that you're never even going to see you may not even ever look at it may not even be applicable to you uh or at least not now anyway so you can stay focused on what you need to do so like if you find that you're here on the gladiator level you would just go to this section here but we have a whole section called Keepa right here. And this actually is a recent webinar that we just did there. Actually, Kate did it with Jimmy about the product finders. So this is a little bit more advanced strategy with Keepa, but all the Keepa content is here. Um, and I, I guarantee there's more that's just not tagged with Keepa. Like we've talked about Keepa so much. <laughs> and a lot. Yes. there's a whole, we have it. The quick and then start, we have the Amazon Quick there. Start class. That's actually a great place. If you join um, the group, that is a great place to start. It will, if you are a new seller and you're like, I don't know where to begin, um, the quick start class will get you off to a really good start. Just walking you through the basics, introducing you to how to find things. Um, you know, we talked a little, obviously a lot tonight right about here. where to find things, but yeah. this is kind of walking you through. Yeah. Like this, how do I, how do I know what to tell, what, if it's a good thing to buy or not? um this kind of walks you through that and here's an example of what the back end looks like you can download <laughs> the transcript you can download the audio you can download the video you can speed it up um you can also search um the video you can search all the videos and the transcripts but this is the section so if you're just starting out on amazon and you jump into legends then start here with the quick start and that's yep. 
in the uh, in the start here post at the top of the group, we tell you to do that, but this is where you'd want to start. This is like our step-by-step -step basic, how to get started on Amazon. And it's all in here. So um, how does one get to the membership site? So um, Vicentia, I, um, it's, I'll send you the link. I mean, there's a link in the group, you know, post either me private message me or post in the legends group that question. And we'll, um, I or somebody will point you to the exact link. There's a link that you, uh, I, it's one of the start here posts. Um, let me just, let me find it right now. Uh, so I'll do some customer service here too. <laughs> Everybody else, you guys can jump off. If you want to. <laughs> but here's the, at the very top of the page. Um, no, not add. Welcome to the legends family. So if you go to the top, go to the start here post. Um, Right here, sign up for our membership site with video search capabilities. Now, if you just joined not too long ago, like within the last couple of months, you should have, you would, once you signed up, you would have got automatic access to the group and to the membership site with a link to the login. Um, but you can also click here and get it. Yes, there is a WhatsApp group and you get involved in WhatsApp groups just by, um, you should have filled out a form once you signed up and our VA will get you into one of the groups. Yeah, and the WhatsApp is for, we share deals in there. And also there's some folks that prefer WhatsApp over Facebook. And so they'll answer questions, ask questions in the Q&A. But most of the questions are in Facebook. Yeah. So, yeah, but guys, if you are interested in that deal, it ends next Tuesday. Just go to amzlegends.com forward slash 50 off. Make sure that's right. Yep, that's right. It is. We'd love to have you join us if you feel like that's a fit for you. So cool, honey. Anything else? No, well, if you guys have questions, um, you know, just reach out. If there's anything we can help answer. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night, a great Thanksgiving, and we'll see you later. Bye. All right, bye.